instance, and then after the break, just free form discussions, whatever is on your mind, or whatever you want to talk about. So if that sounds known to our mind, everyone can participate in uh, people have documents, writing down notes, and Indeed. Can everyone read that? Okay. Good. So I'll hand it over to Tim. So well, I'm okay with the proposed schedule as long as you're okay with us asking annoying questions in the middle of the tutorial. At will. That's it, yes. Okay. Cool. Hi. Uh, so my name is Phil, Phil Schaefer. I'm with Juniper Networks. Uh, this is code I wrote last uh, August. Oh, okay. August. August, I think. Um, so, the, uh, so we'll start with a, with a problem description. Every, every problem starts with something gone wrong. Uh, in our case, we wanted to, uh, uh, we, we want to uh, serve up uh, nice formatted, uh, digestible content, uh, but we want to do it in a single code path. We want to not have if defs, not have if XML, blah, blah, blah. We want to have a, a rich formatting environment, and we want to make it as simple as possible, given that it's not actually that simple. Uh, in Junos, we, we did this uh, about 2001. We made an API on top of our software, which lives on top of FreeBSD. Um, and the way we did it was to model everything with, with uh, modeling languages, a modeling language called DDL that, that, mon that uh, modeled all of our commands and configuration, and a modeling language called ODL uh, that modeled all our output. Uh, output would come from daemons in XML. Uh, it would arrive at the CLI, and the CLI would render it into uh, into text. Uh, so, in the in the Genos UI, there there are actually two pieces. Uh, there's the CLI piece and the MGD piece. The MGD has all of the smarts. And the CLI really has terminal handling bits. Um, the, uh, it knows how to do uh, Emacs key bindings at a command line. It knows how to do uh, auto more. It knows how to do uh, uh, command comp uh, how to ask for command completion. Although the actual command completion happens on the on the, the smart side, on the MGD side. Uh, but the most important thing here is it knows how to render uh, XML into text. Um, the uh, each developer in, in, in Juniper is responsible for creating their own data model, and uh, uh, we, we provide tools to compile those into, into binary forms that ship on our, on our devices. Um, and then the, uh, this infrastructure looks at, looks at that compiled data uh, to know how to, how to do the rendering. Um, that, uh, oops. So, so that model doesn't really work for straight FreeBSD because you don't want to have something between the, the, uh, uh, between the, the binary and the, and the user. You want to be able to make, make output go directly to, to the TTY. Um, so a couple of years ago, I uh, was talking to Simon. We came up with this idea for how to, how to make this happen. Um, and, and like I said, I finally got to coding it last summer. But, uh, so we took our, uh, the XML API in Junos and the data modeling language in Junos uh, to the ITF, and they became standards. Uh, NetConf is the API, and Yang is the is the modeling language that defines what goes into that API. Uh, and the the way that connects to this conversation is that libxo uses that terminology from Yang, and it also makes XML encodings and JSON encodings that are compatible with uh, uh, Yang Yang XML and JSON encodings. Um, so just to give a a, a, a quick overview of Yang. There are really four constructs in Yang. Uh, there are leaves, which are the bottom bottom rung of your of your organizational tree. There are containers, which are uh, organizational pieces of your tree. There's lists, which are uh, uh, items that can appear multiple times, and there are leaf lists, which are leaves that can appear multiple times. And you'll have you see examples of all those here. Uh, system and a login are containers. A message is a leaf. Uh, and then there's a, a list of users which have a key, uh, a leaf that is a key as a f as a name, and then a leaf that is uh, uh, a leaf of full name. And then on the other on the opposite side, you'll see a container has a leaf list of uh, domain searches. Um, and that Yang module would look like this: uh, container system uh, holds a container login. Um, uh, uh, holds a, a leaf list of domain search and its type, and then it holds a, 
container called login, which has a leaf message and its type. And there's uh, uh, additional information here, uh, all sorts of constraints you can add uh, both uh, to the leaf and to the relationship between the leaves. Um, and you can see the example here on string. There's a, a length and a pattern. Um, so that's, that's pretty much all you'd need to know about Yang. To, it's, those, it's those four constructs that, it, that we carry into LibXL. So <coughs> if on the previous slide, so you have a uh, leaf list. You could have multiple le leaf list entries listed after each other in the same scope. Yes, a leaf list says there, this is a leaf. Uh, but instead of having a, a, a set of tags under it, it has a single tag, which is this type. Right. Okay. So this would be like the domain search path in, in Genos. Okay. Uh, all, of this, all of the stuff in, in, in this configuration converts uh, essentially into uh, FreeBSD config files. Um, so you have a you have a, a uh, names to value. So you have a, a list of users, uh, which is keyed by the leaf name, and then you describe the leaf name and its contents, and then you would describe the f uh, other additional leaves, including like a UID leaf and a, um, uh, there's a shell leaf, but that's hidden. I mean, there's there's a, a other bits in that in that uh, data model. Um, so the problem is. Uh, you guys uh, saw the uh, Ypsilon talk yesterday, right? That is exactly the Juniper story. Uh, we're in exactly the same state with, state with almost exactly the same numbers, the same five years, the same release state, uh, uh, release seven. You know, we're, it's exactly the same story. It's, it's scarily the same story. But our problem is we've gone to, to the uh, BSD utilities and we've added logic to make them uh, emit XML so that they can play in, in, the, in the Junos API story. Um, and that's not some, the, the, it's, it's typically coded as the if XML blah, else blah. We don't want to, pa we don't want to, uh, we don't want to carry that forward. Um, but th for us, this makes uh, FreeBSD rebases very expensive. And the whole, uh, we've, we've done this project called, uh, internally called Occam, which is intended to reduce our time to rebase to, you know, uh, uh, near zero. Uh, near zero. Yeah. Some, some fictional near zero value. Um, but we believe generating XML and JSON and, and uh, other formats is, is, is not something that's, that's just appropriate for us. We, it's something we want to share. Uh, so, uh, so the nifty neato future is uh, LibXO. Um, LibXO uh, is a set of functions uh, that you call uh, to generate output. And the uh, type of output that's generated is based on command line arguments or uh, or uh, uh, library function calls. You can you can say exactly what uh, what what format you want. Um, typically, it's done with the uh, dash dash libxo argument. Um, uh, in this example, uh, ls dash dash libxo. I'm turning on three flags. I want XML output. I want it pretty, and I want warnings. So if I'm doing something stupid, let me know. And then the rest of the arguments are are the standard. Uh, LS arguments. Um, so there's there's uh, uh, there's essentially two two sorts of functions. Uh, there's a function called uh, XO omit, which is a uh, a, a reasonably co uh, close uh, substitute for printf, and there are uh, open and close functions for containers and, and lists, so that you can organize your hierarchy. Typically, if you have a for loop, you turn it into a list. If you have uh, organizational uh, structure, you turn that into containers. But the key is that it's a single code path. It, uh, the, um, the exo call knows based on what parameters have been passed how to generate the, the data, and it does it uh, during that exo call. Um, li, uh, exo emit takes a format string, uh, which along the lines of printf string uh, describes the, the list of additional arguments that are passed. Um, it uses uh, braces to define a field. A field will have a, uh, a role, a set of modifiers, an, uh, an optional role and set of modifiers. The, the default role is a value. Um, and then it'll have the, the uh, name of that field uh, or the content, depending on the role. Um, and then it'll have uh, one or two uh, field formats. You can specify uh, alternate, um, alternate 
formats for the two encoding formats, that is XML and JSON, uh, versus the text for formats, which is uh, HTML and text. Um, in this example, uh, I, this, is a, this is kind of a fake example because this isn't the way WC works, but, uh, uh, but imagine the, the LibXO uh, call here, which makes four fields, lines, words, characters, and uh, file name, pass four arguments, and then uh, after each of those is the, uh, after each of those uh, field names is the uh, uh, format. Um, so if I call it directly, I get, I get straight uh, text output. If I call it uh, with a dash SXO uh, XML pretty and worn, I get my fancy XML output. Um, in this example, you can see that uh, a libxo string and the, the output from, from, the, from that XO call uh, in each of the four uh, supported formats. Um, uh, text that is outside of the braces is just copied verbatim into the text modes, uh, and then, uh, uh, but it's not copied at all into the uh, encoding formats. Uh, so here I'm, I'm, I'm saying two field, I have two fields, a host and a domain. And I'll generate those either as a pretty looking message or XML content or JSON content or HTML content. And the interesting thing with the HTML content is you get the, uh, uh, you get the text and the data. You get X paths for, uh, uh, for the XML content. Um, but you end up with, the, with this set of divs that if you remove the divs, you, get, you, you end up with the exact text output. But yet, you have the, 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 the divs there to allow you to render it in a, in a browser or whatever. So in a field definition, before the colon, you can give a set of roles and modifiers. Um, the, as I said before, the default one is the, um, the, default one is the value. But these are the additional ones. Uh, you can give a, a, uh, uh, a color roll, a decoration roll, error. Um, uh, the label is something that would go, come before a value. A note is something that would come after a value. So I would say um, um, uh, like 12 bytes used. The used would be, the, would be a, a label. Would be, I'm sorry, it would be a note. Uh, you, the label would, would come b uh, before the value. So if I said used colon 12, in that, in that instance, used would be a label. Uh, there are roles for padding. Uh, a title is, uh, is typically a, like a column heading. Um, uh, units appear after the, after the value. Um, uh, warnings allow you to make uh, warnings. There's also uh, uh, a, a, a XO warning function that, allow, that will allow that. Uh, start anchor and stop anchor allow you to, to take multiple fields, uh, to take multiple fields and, ah, um, to take multiple fields and, and, and pad their length together. For example, I could say uh, square bracket colon 30 close and then some sort of content, and then at the end, uh, square bracket, co uh, close square bracket, that's a brace. And the width here, the, the content here would be uh, 30 characters wide, justified to 30 characters wide. Uh, negative value shift to the, shift to the left and all that. Um, if, the, if the field is a, is a color, there's a set of colors and effects. Um, I'm not a color person myself, but I was asked to do this, so. It's fairly, fairly simple. You can specify a foreground and a background color uh, with any of those color names. Uh, and then you can, uh, you can uh, essentially uh, do underline, bold, and inverse video. And there are uh, uh, no dash forms to turn all that off. Yes? Um, when you say units, is LibXO aware of units? No, it carries those as uh, information to be served up by the rendering. In, 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 in most cases, that would just be for HTML. It, 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 gives, it gives the text a meaning. When I'm outputting in XML format or JSON, I'd like to not have below prefixes, for example. 
Yep, we'll, we'll get to that in just a second. So there's a, there's a set of modifiers. And the modifier for that would be the humanized modifier. If you put a, a, a H before the colon, uh, you'll get uh, uh, you'll get humanized. Uh, after yesterday's uh, lib U UCL thing, I have this in the exact opposite. I default to uh, 1024. He defaults to 1000. I, I'll change that to to align with him. Um, so it'll so once that's fixed, that will be a, a HN dash. Uh, 1024, um, and it will default to, to 1,000. Um, but that's the way you get that. You just flag it as a number, and the, in the encoding formats, it will come out as the number, the, the, the god-awful massive number. Uh, only for the text displays will, will you get the, the human-readable format. Uh, and in the HTML, it'll carry the, uh, the human-readable format as an attribute of the div. Yeah, there's a tool called uh, XOHTML. You say XOHTML in the command line, and it it uh, it generates HTML for uh, HTML wrappers and CSS references and all that sort of stuff to be able to display in the browser. And I can I can demo that later as well. Um, so the, the the colon modifier puts a colon after it. It's uh, uh, some of these are very minor. Uh, white space puts a white space after the label uh, or before the note. Uh, just to allow consistency. Um, the quote and no quote turn on and off quotes because it's not easy to know what you want in JSON. You could be printing the string true or you could be printing the value true. There's really no way for me to guess. Uh, in general, if you're printing a string, I will uh, quote it. If you're printing a decimal uh, 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 numerical format, I will not quote it. Even there, it's kind of iffy because JSON doesn't handle large numbers which really sucks. So, so most people give up and quote, quote large numbers. Uh, so, so if you're using a 64-bit something. Yes? Um, so I don't have the code handy at the moment, but I have had an issue with LibXO where I wanted to output null in JSON, and I was passing in a null pointer in C. Um, and even with the no quotes modifier, it was always quoting the word null for me. OK. Can you mark that? That, that's a bug. I will attempt to get you the actual code example. Okay. Um, uh, the rest of these are mostly self-explanatory. Trim will trim leading and trailing white space. Uh, uh, display and encoding are fields that will only be present in, 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 in one or the other set of fields. Um, and there are times when uh, the, the layout of your content will require you to do a fake uh, a key at the beginning where you, where you wouldn't normally want it. Um, uh, so, so there are times when you'll emit the same thing in encoding and then somewhere else as a, as a display, uh, just because of the nature of the data. Um, uh, so in these two examples, uh, Uh, the first one's not very interesting. I'm just uh, emitting three uh, fields. Uh, they're all uh, unsigned. And then a, uh, a, a, uh, a note. Uh, the interesting bits here are that if you have a slash, because slash separates uh, formats, uh, uh, you have to escape it. And to escape that, you have to escape your escape. Um, in the second one, I'm making a label with a white space and a colon after it called humanize, and then a set of humanized fields. Um, so in addition to the short form, the letter, you can also, after a comma, use the long forms, if you like long forms. And there are some that you can, the, the HN uh, dash, um, because they're rare and Rare enough that they should probably need, need to be spelled out. Those are only available as a long name. Strings in LibXO are, uh, are UTF-8. Uh, um, so the normal 
uh, percent %s is a UTF-8 string. If you want uh, locale specific, you use percent %h. If you want uh, wide characters, you use percent %l. I know it seems backwards because L, ls you would think is locale specific, but it's long, so it's the longer form. That's localized to whatever your current uh, LC type is. So it's the encoding of localized The contents. So if you're passing me a string that is, and that string is in your current locale. So if, if, you, have, if you read something from, a, uh, from an ASCII file, you can pass it as ASCII data <laughs> if you're, right, if you're type C. No, it doesn't translate. So do we have a get text equivalent within French? So get text will return, uh, I think it returns locale strings. So that should integrate directly. So if we were to import um, FDSC's get text in that notation, this would just work. Is, is it worth? Can you tell me what you mean by that? Uh, so having a format string that would be this is the key in the string file rather than this is the text. So you don't have to, in every single instance, do get text of the key and then pass that to the back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we could do that. Could you make a note, please? That's true. <laughs> Um, so it, it turns out that, that this was actually the first obnoxious problem I, I ran into. Uh, I chose W because I thought W would be a nice, easy thing to convert. It turns out it's a pain in the butt. It does uh, days of the week and only days of the week in, lo in uh, loc locale specific. Um, <laughs> and I'm generating XML, JSON, and HTML, which are all UTF-8. So this was a problem I had to buy into early. Um, so that's the way I solved it. Um, the other, the other uh, problem is uh, width in the percent in the printf format is overbound. It, tells, it attempts to tell you the number of columns, but it also has to tell you the number of bytes, uh, which, is, which is the problem. So if I say I want, ten, I want uh, a width of 10 characters and I pass you a UTF-8 string, I could be, that could be two characters. Three, three characters, right? So I've added a, a third number uh, to say the width, and then uh, let's see, the, to say the length in bytes, and then the width, and the the max uh, the column max columns uh, defaults to uh, the length. So, and you can use the star format as well, uh, and pick those values up off the stack. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Which probably means that they're not really UTF-8 strings. Somebody will probably correct me on that because I think UTF-8 strings can actually include, include a null, but not today. No, UTF-8 was specifically designed not to include null. Okay, good. Um, so there, there are a set of open and closed functions uh, to open uh, containers and lists. Uh, here you, uh, in this example, we're opening a, a container called top and then a container called system, emitting some output and then closing, closing those containers. Um, the, the comment says that all uh, containers are organizational. They're how to, how to separate your things in, into meaningful hierarchy. Um, Yang has a thing called a presence container where the presence of a container means something, but in the in LibXO lingo, it doesn't really matter. You made the container, you, you, you assumably know what you're doing. Um, in, in your code, the open containers and closed containers uh, should match. If you, use the, if you have the warn flag on, it will warn you when that's not true. Um, in general, when you close a container, it will close to that, le to that level, so if you're uh, if I was missing this closed container system, uh, I would get a warning 
and and uh, the right thing would happen. Uh, and we'll th we'll talk more about that later. Um, so here's, here's that same example with the content it would generate in each of the four formats. Uh, lists are a set of instances. Uh, they typically have a key, which you would note with the K flag, which is gloriously missing from my example. Um, that should be right here in the name. There should be a K right there. Um, you, you, you open a list, and then you open an instance. You close the instance, and then you close the list. Uh, I don't track the names of the, of the tags inside the, inside the list, so you have to, you, you're required to tell me when you start an instance. Um, the, uh, again, the, the close, it can kind of figure out. I can kind of guess on that. Uh, and you'll get a warning if the, uh, um, if the warn flag is on. Is there um, any checking of, I mean, check to see that all the elements have the same type, but is there uh, any kind of checking to check that the instances look a bit like each other, whether they have, I mean, you wouldn't always necessarily want to have all the same fields and all the same instances in the list, but if you had a thousand things that have a name and a key and a stock number and then a thing that <laughs> yeah. Then I might like to know about it in the warning mode. Yeah. Um, is the data type different than the precap small stack type? Should I find those types? Well, yeah, so I mean, in a for loop, that's right. pretty straightforward, but you could imagine right. generating things in other ways. Yeah, I mean, I, I may call four functions to generate my complete table, and one of them may be an idiot yeah. and generate stuff that I don't want. So, uh, so yeah, I, I can see having that. Uh, currently, the it, it doesn't keep any of the content. Uh, you know, it, it emits it and, and it's gone. It keeps a stack of open containers and markers, but but past that, it doesn't keep anything. Um, there is a, a issue open on on the GitHub site that says uh, that asks for that uh, 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 tracking containers, looking for duplicates, because one of the things. Uh, JSON couldn't handle is if I had uh, like two in stock tags here. Right. So that, that should be an error, but because I don't keep track of content, but, but that's a, 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 a worthwhile enhancement. Yeah, you might want to have a flag in the open instance that says this is going to be a table, so make sure every name in the table instance of this in this list is, uh, sorry, the open list that says every instance of this list is this format. Hold it. Yeah. Um, yeah, just pause that one. It's a good idea. Most of the content I've looked at is more variable than that. Um, but things like LS output, where you want basically LS dash L. Right. Is the table. But even in LS dash L, some of the fields will vary by record, like the. Uh, uh, if it's a directory or a loop. Um, so the last of the four con constructs is a leaf list. A leaf list is just a, uh, a modifier on the element. So you simply s go through your, go through your element, uh, uh, waffle through your list, and, and spit out your leaf list. Uh, markers. Markers are a thing you can throw on the internal st stack of uh, LibXO to say, uh, protect me. And, and if I'm, uh, if I try and pop past that, I, I won't, I'll fail and I'll get a warning. Uh, if I uh, if I pop a marker and there's anything left on the stack, it'll clean up for me. So it's a it's a way of protecting you from code that you call and protecting you from yourself, that sort of thing. Um, here's some some more examples. Uh, 
most of this we've covered. You can see the title uh, for statistics. Um, the uh, padding. Uh, a, a lot of the fields like uh, 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 roles like uh, like the TNP, D, the uh, decoration notes, uh, labels, and titles will either take a static string as a as a value as a content, uh, or give you or give you the option of using a, a format, and we'll consume arguments off the stack. Um, that's about all that's there. Libxo has the idea of handles so that you can write to multiple uh, output sources, out, output destinations. Uh, by the the functions I've shown you so far work on the default handle. Uh, if you if you call any of the handle forms of functions with uh, a null, you'll get the default handle. Um, That needs fixed. Uh, it would be more than that because I can't have, I, I, I would, I, I can't have overlapping flushes, right? If you were, if you're building something, uh, when you're, when you're ready to flush, it has to be complete. The, you know, the two overlapping threads can't. Uh, Yeah. Is there any reason not to just make the the handle itself thread local? Uh, no, you said the buffer. The whole handle. Okay. All right. Um, uh, ExoCreate makes handles. ExoSet sets writer sets the write and flush function for a handle. Uh, ExoCreate to file is a simple API that registers the uh, functions that'll write to a handle, and you, you pass it a file star. Um, and all the all of these functions will have uh, all the functions from the previous slides have handle handle versions of them. Just underscore h uh, is the handle version. Yes. Absolutely. So I'm wondering if it would make sense to have another output format, which is kind of a schema format, which ignores the actual data, but just kind of gives me information about the format strings. Um, that's the sort of thing that might be useful so that you could check. At least, as, at least to give you a starting point for a schema. And if you want to remove a field, you can emit it here as an encoding only field so that it doesn't, doesn't show up, but you can, and then you can emit your new fanciness. Um, so so the, my question in response to your question is how, how much does the BSD community want to buy into modeling their data? 
and what would that modeling tool be? You know, we use we use Yang and NetConf, so that that's that would be our choice. Um, okay. I mean, I, I could, I could, I could reasonably make a uh, an output style that's uh, Yang. You run your thing, and it outputs a Yang schema. Yeah, our, our whole thing when we made the XML API on Junos was we wanted to get people out of screen scraping, which is what most network apps do. And it's it's horrible for them, and it's worse for us. And between this and the UCL, I think there's a potential to have a big push to make FreeBSD much easier to manage with tools, <laughs> as yep. opposed to with systems having to go and edit config files by hand all the time. Yep. Uh, Handles. Um, on a, on a uh, handle, you can turn. You can uh, call the uh, set flags function and, and uh, set any of these flags. Um, uh, close FP closes the file pointer that you gave me when you close the handle. Uh, color enables color. And the, uh, do the right thing mode kind of disappeared. Uh, I added uh, a state machine. In, into into the Libxo engine, and that kind of made it always do the right thing. Uh, the the previous do the right thing mode would track tags and, and make open and close match if you passed in a null. Uh, so that's kind of that should probably just be deprecated. Uh, info is a means of providing f a dictionary of tags with help messages and data types. And the place that becomes interesting is HTML because I admit those as uh, as data dash uh, help, data dash uh, type, data dash whatever, um, so that you have that available in 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 your uh, uh, in your in your tools. Um, uh, keys uh, keys generates uh, uh, turns the key into a, a key attribute on the uh, on the XML tag. Uh, no environment says don't look at your environment. If you don't have that flag set, uh, it will look at the uh, libxo options environment variable. Uh, so if you want to turn color on, you turn it on there. Um, uh, no humanize means, uh, uh, you, means you don't really care about your users and you want to show them big ugly numbers. Um, exactly. Um, uh, pretty says you like pretty output. It does new lines and all that sort of stuff. Otherwise, JSON and XML come out as single lines. Uh, underscores uh, replaces hyphens with underscores. Uh, what we're trying to do is, is make some consistency. So as you make uh, uh, tags, use, use dashes, not underscores. Uh, but JSON likes underscores. Uh, so uh, if, you're, if you're intending to feed this into JSON, you just turn on, turn on underscores. It'll automatically translate for you. Um, uh, uh, oh, uh, units carries the units in XML as an attribute and in HTML as a display dash units. Um, warning and warn XML. Uh, warning will make a uh, uh, warning flags when something goes wrong. Uh, warn XML will make the will make those warnings in XML on your uh, on your uh, on your uh, on the file associated with the handle. Um, um, no, I don't have that pluggable, but maybe I should. 
Um, XPath throws the XPath expressions into HTML. Uh, columns is a columns is a kind of a hack. Uh, counting columns is a pain in the butt uh, because I have to convert it from uh, uh, in, I have to convert everything into UTF-8 and back. So if you're going from ASCII to ASCII and having to go back and forth, it's a pain in the butt. So uh, so I will return a an inaccurate number of columns consumed uh, as the RC, as the return code from XO emit. Um, uh, unless you turn on that flag, and then I will accurately return the number of uh, the number of columns. Um, and then XO flush uh, tells the handle to flush after XO each XO emit call. Most of those are also available as uh, command line options. Uh, I don't think there's anything here except for indent. Uh, um, there's nothing here. Why doesn't indent work? Pardon? Why doesn't indent work? You said it's separate. No, uh, the indent is, is not a flag. Oh, right, I see what you're saying. Uh, it's not one of the XOF flags. It's a, oops, it's a uh, command line option. Uh, so there are some support func functions. Uh, XL parser arguments, you pass it your argc and argv. It strips out the lib, uh, dash dash libxo options, returns you an arg count of what's left. So you typically would say arg, arg, argc equals XO parser, parser args of argc argv if argc less than zero below. Um, XO flush is pretty obvious. XO attr allows you to, to specify attributes. Uh, these are carried straight in XML, and in JSON, they're carried as at uh, argument, at, at value. Um, there's a set of uh, plug, plug replacements for uh, warn, uh, error, error x, error c, all, the, all, those, uh, all those functions. Um, they're the functions that allow you to set things. You can call set options with uh, a, a string like the command line string, or you can call XO set flags with a set of the XO flags ordered together. Uh, you can also customize the allocator and set the program name via, via those functions. Uh, and again, the set info allows you to pass a data structure that describes your, um, uh, your fields, their data type, and help strings, and that sort of stuff. Uh, in addition to the library, there are three tools. Uh, XO uh, works like printf. You say XO, uh, whatever uh, format string with braces in it, and then the set of arguments, and it generates fancy output, just like printf does, like printf1 does. Uh, XO lint uh, is a Perl script that looks at your uh, source code and tries to, tries to find errors in it, uh, flags that don't go together, uh, contents that don't make sense, uh, that sort of thing. Um, it can also generate the uh, uh, info data um, and a list of, uh, of all the tag names used in your, uh, uh, in your program. Pipe that through sort and look to see what you misspelled. Um, XOHTML, uh, you say XOHTML in the command line. It wraps it in HTML and uh, it wraps it in a uh, little bit of HTML and pointers to uh, CSS and JavaScript files to allow it to do web magic. Um, so here's my list of topics for the future. Uh, uh, one of the interesting things from, for us right now is uh, syslogng. Uh, in Junos, we make uh, uh, we have essentially a, a replacement for syslog that, that generates uh, SD, uh, the new style syslog with SD, SD params. I have no idea what FreeBSD does now, uh, but it would be nice to have an uh, uh, XO syslog function that plumbs into that. So you can use the braces to define your, your fields of, uh, of uh, SD params, your set of SD params. Um, and I'd probably have to add at least a field to say what the identifier is. And I assume it would take the, take the old style uh, uh, facility and severity 
flags instead of putting that into the format. There's no reason to. Um, so I did colors, but I'm not, I don't really like colors because I, uh, I always use inverse video, and so one of the annoying things is having to remap colors. So I, I may make a, a, a color map to, to uh, keep dark blue from showing up on my black back background. Um, the, currently, the, the format strings are parsed as, you're, as you do a printf. Uh, it, it, it might be wise to make uh, a compilable, cacheable form of them. So inside a loop, you make, uh, 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 you know, we'd make a, a flag or a roll to say, cache this uh, this this format string, uh, and the right thing would happen. Um, and then to make the backends pluggable, so that you can use protobufs or thrift or Captain Proto or whatever's cool tomorrow, uh, um, as as well as the the lib uh, UCL uh, backgrounds. Um, and, and all that, I'm sorry, the, the, the binary forms seem to require a pre-compiled because you don't have to do the lookups from, you know, this string equals uh, this number in, in uh, thrift. Um, so I think that's a dependency there. And then in the science fiction category, um, you know, uh, being, able to, being able to take this as HTML and display it, uh, in a browser, makes me want to get away from from using a 1970s TTY and 24 by 80, and you know, actually get get into a rich environment. And we have a project like that in Junos right now called Clearo. Um, and if we have time, I'll show you that. Um, and that's the end of my slides. If, if not, just you know, uh, take your terminal and make it, you know, put WebKit behind it or something, and make it so that. Yeah, WebKit is maybe overkill, but. But something. So. Yeah. So if. So uh, in the demo role. Uh oh! Don't die. <laughs> Uh, so here's, oh, you want it bigger? Yeah, Tell me when. Okay. We good? Yeah. I'll go one more. Uh, so here's the uh, simple test program, spits out a table. Um, take the same thing, add your uh, libxo equals. Uh, Good looking XML there. How about some beautiful JSON? What's that? No, I'm just taking the head because it's really long and, and and looking at this stuff is not fun, even with pretty. Um, so if I do. So there's my fancy output in HTML. And my little web voodoo stuff knows enough to do, to tell me what the fields are. I get fancy headers. Yeah. But if I did that as, uh, I threw in, say, XPath and info. Then I get even more goodness. And the idea is, is in the, well, 
So, um, so if you look at the source for that beautiful little test program, you'll see this little info table. And it tells me what the fields are, their ty data type, and their the help. Uh, it should be right about uh, there. Yep. Um, and you can look at the the way this thing makes the the tables that you're seeing over here. Um, So here's a so here's the output from uh, the clear tool uh, running on a running uh, between me and a Junus box. This is a web server that's taking the command line that I typed in, wrapping it in in netconf, making RPC to a to a Junus box, getting the HTML back. Passing it back to the browser, or it gets rendered. Uh, we're talking to the Juno Space guys. Um, you know, and from an environment like this, I should be able to say, you know, this number is a is a peer. Uh, this is an interface. This is an AS number. This is a, you know, show me crap. Show me interesting crap about the thing that I'm on top of. And when I click on it, give me a give me a, a context menu that makes sense. You know, show me spark lines, show me fancy stuff, make me, make me drool. Um, so that's that's that, and then uh, out on GitHub I/O is the the manual with all the cool coolness, uh, uh, and this the contents here is, uh, has been transliterated into man pages as well. And the only one I'm aware of is that uh, the HN one. Yeah. Um, Sorry. Yeah, because yeah, yours is from so May. Yeah, the last time you told me there was something new. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so it's got a. It, uh, I've had a couple of bug fixes there. Yeah. Somebody hit me up yesterday about. Uh, XO doesn't include uh, standard args.h, so that's already fixed, but it's not in the, it's not in head. Okay. So yeah, once all the changes are in like the backwards, yep. uh, then I'll import it and we're up to date again. Cool. Uh, so what else was here on the future work? One thing that we don't have in the previous is that the, the XO link and the XO HDL that's in Comtrip, like the internet of the utilities, if people find that useful, that should also be easy. Like XO link is useful, The link, yeah. It's pro, right? So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's being useful. Sure. You know, it's, it's it it seems fine. like those kinds of utilities are things that you would want to have, but don't necessarily need to be in the base system. Right. There's no reason not to have those as a So would there, should there be an option with the port to not install the library, just the utilities? So you're. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
because I don't, I don't, I don't want to be in the position where I've committed something uh, that works because I have the port installed that wouldn't work if I had the base system. Shell script, I think. Okay, so we can put that anywhere we want on the user bin so that the HTML output of LiveXO is useful. Yep. Yeah, so. Yeah. Okay. so, coming back to localization, mm -hmm. could you help us? How does that work? Do you just basically measure one's piece of land? Um, I can't check. So Junos is all localized. Which is in that whatever you gave us, we <laughs> give right back to you. So if you set your name as you know some fancy string, we'll hand it right back to you. So assumably, if you put it in with your terminal. But will it? I'm talking about localization, not character sets at all. Yeah. So when you ask for some human readable output, do you just get it in American, or do you get it in whatever language it's in? It's it's strictly uh, American. But your your comma your printf comma flag should carry that, right? Your printf comma flag should carry that. And that should all happen automatically when you, because you'll have set your, uh, you know, when, when your when your browser request comes in, it should carry that that type with it. It should set it in the environment. Uh, not only will libxo pick that up, but so will get text and the right so thing should, should happen. Browser request is happening after you generated the HTML. If I generate. Yeah, this is a fake. I mean, the libxo is uh, xohtml is simply a means of letting you display the stuff. In a real world, you'd have a web server, and your web server would be getting a request, and you know, client asks for a DF, you go run DF, you get output, and you hand it back, like the, the clear model. But that's assuming that you're in an interactive plane. Yeah. I'm more thinking, OK, I generate a big, well, actually, probably not so much the HTML, but the XML. I generate some reports from the states of my running system. I now want other people to look at them. I'd like them to be able to look at them in their language of choice, which okay. means when I do that translation from XML to something human readable, be it HTML or PDF or Word document or whatever, um, that process has enough information to do the localization. All right. So how would that work? But doesn't that create very large blocks of data out of this only a small amount of data being used? Well, it would mean that your um, XML format would have a reference to your strings file. You wouldn't want to necessarily embed it each time, but say the strings file is installed here. And it would use 
to get X keys rather than to get X values. Yeah. And then that would be enough to get <coughs> into the yeah. organization of that presentation time rather than the general time. Assuming, of course, that get X file can be where the client is. Yeah. Well, if not, then you fall back on the, on the current task. You, so you'd render it. But then I'd put on the on the on the XML tag as an attribute, or on the HTML tag as a data dash, whatever, uh, the the get text number, and then some, some something else would have to pro post process that tool and the and the file. Yeah, that's easy enough. Well, I can certainly. Many, many of us speak American French. <laughs> 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 uh, Never as a person. Canadian. <laughs> Canadian. <laughs> there is no such thing as American English. What is FreeBSD's <laughs> overall direction towards localization? Uh, we think it should not suck nearly as much as it does. <laughs> <laughs> we all agree on that. <laughs> that's, that's an edgy one. Do they have string files for utilities? Not yet, because we don't have get text in place. So okay. And when is that coming? Well, NetBSD. After you. <laughs> uh, I can't, can't come after me. now has a version with a nice license. So that, the, that was mostly the blocker that there's a GPL thing. Um, there's now a version with a Kamin port. Um, but probably the time to import it is once a utility is ordered by the user. Yeah. Yeah. And then okay. it'll be the same process as the libxoization of things. And if it is the same process as libxoization, then maybe we can drive that by making it the same process. So, yeah. oh. so if you can give me a pointer to that uh, get text library, then I can certainly. Yeah, that's, that's another issue. What do we do with the kernel? The messages are coming out of the kernel. Yeah, we, we talk about it after. Okay. <laughs> uh, we do have all the syscouples that are now nicely human formatted and sometimes really hard for you know, machines to read. So, um, well, I think that's partly where a plugin for binary encoding would be helpful because I think there is some seriously, uh, where if you have this control that needs to deal with something any more complicated than a number or a string, then you start to use binary encoding. Yeah. Um, and then if that could hook into this, then that would be yeah. useful. Yeah. 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 More than just controls. I have the tools built. All of the stuff that mm -hmm. I have config does that yeah. the API breaks every major release. It would be really nice to not do that.
like live in B. So we could say, please emit this live in B thing according to the following formatting niceties. Yep. Uh, you know, that would tie the whole story together very nicely. And all of that, of course, would make business things so much more friendly to automation tools, because I think everybody wants that. <laughs> Self-describing for data types also, or, or just for names? Uh, it has a few primitive types, which include things like integers. I don't know how much floating point generated integers and strings. And it has uh, aggregate types of lists. And, uh, it has null, boolean, number string, pendulous, descriptor, and binary. And recently added arrays, all of those except for null. Arrays of null. <laughs> <laughs> Currently, actually, if you try to make an array that has a null in it, it returns null. You can't have an array with a null in it. So, would this be, would that be something that you'd want LibXO to make and and get that encoding in the kernel, it or would you make a different library and? Now I'm thinking of getting data out of the kernel. Yes, if they're all key value pairs, then LibXO can do that, right? Yes, yeah, so I mean, I think there are a couple of different things that you want to do. One is you'd like the kernel to emit this self-describing binary representation. And then in your command line utility, you would just say, OK, XO emit and whatever this is. I don't want to have to re-describe it. Yep. So that's one part of it. Um, and the other. information would not have been fun. So I'm very happy we had LibXO. But if we could have output it in a binary format, that would have been that much better. Yep. So I think it's both ends that we would like LibXO to be able to hook into NB or some other binary representation. But I think NB is probably a reasonable choice because it's already been used in a couple of places in the base system. Okay. So maybe you'd say XO emit this NV object, and if you ever have a choice, then choose to humanize stuff when there's something that can be humanized, or you, know, you might provide a couple of very high-level guidance kinds of things. And if you need very precise controls, maybe you just have to open up the object yourself and, and do it. But it would be nice to have a sort of fire and forget mode where it provides some reasonable enough output. So is there a way in, in LibMV to encode things like, uh, uh, so, so there must be names. Mm -hmm. Is there yeah, a, a key name in the value, yeah. the type. But is there a way to encode like uh, head, heading, headings or something like that? Or is there a way, on top of it, we can make a convention to say, here's how you encode your headings? Well, uh, it looks more like JSON, right? So you have a container that has a bunch of keys, and then one of those keys might be another container. Right. What do you mean by heading in this context? Um, so if I'm looking to display this in, in some kind of uh, ASCII form to an ASCII user, I want to be able to say, you know, here's a, uh, here's the the name, the size, the used. You know, I want to have, I want to be able to put those up. Oh, yeah. You know, I can use the I can use the field name for that, yeah. but it would be nice to have, e even having a, a, a get text number. 
Yeah, so certainly you would have to have somewhere is a representation of all the other stuff you would put to the screen along with the object. And so it could be that maybe your special XO init NV also takes additional information, whether it's a description that's uh, you know, get text thingy or whatever. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, but what I'm wondering is for, is for that to come out of the kernel in the blob to put the metadata in so that it so that it, so that it can be interpreted. As yeah, a so then we have like a kernel output strings file or something. Right? Yeah. So yeah, so that if you run syscall dash a, it does the same thing as it does now. If you don't say dash dash live xo, and otherwise, yeah. I mean, I don't know how precise we need to be with the syscall output, but I'm sure there's a lot of stuff being screen scraped. So the more precise we can be. Yeah, I think you want to be almost precise. Yes. Yeah. Just imprecise enough that it breaks one thing per person so that they realize, oh, I should stop screen screening. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but not enough the that they think yes. curse this. Yes, yes. everything is broken. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I, I do fear that there is too much dependency on how it is exactly emitted right now. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, the path forward will require us to do exactly the same thing, just in a better way, but eventually move away from the old thing, yeah. But if we can say in 11, from now on, the AVI is not the text that we output. The AVI is the, the JSON or the XML or the NV or whatever that you can get out, and we now stop promising to keep things in the same output formats, the stop block fishing, to depend on that. Then that gives people a chance to... Possibly. I mean, sometimes it is indeed enough just to say what you plan to do, and if no one complains, just do it. Um, because you told them up front that that wasn't what you're going to do, um, especially for the high problems. That's your favorite approach, isn't it? <laughs> oh, but I mean, uh, you'll be objecting the next 30 seconds. Yes. <laughs> um, that would really help. Then you can just effectively change the kernel. Sort them by the MAC address or by the IP yeah. or by the interface name, whatever. Yeah. And that's fairer stuff. It's sort of the same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, well, we're pretty early, time for a break.